Lord with me. And while we might not be inside the four walls of a sanctuary, how many of you know that the church is actually wherever we are? So we can be out on the front lawn and we can still have church. We can be in our own houses and still have church because the church God, we praise God for allowing us to see another sun. We praise God for everyone being here. Uh, amen. Even though in vehicles, we praise God for allowing us to be together again in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. At this time, when we thank our ladies, praise the Lord for uh, bringing us devotion on this morning. Amen. If you love, enjoyed the devotion from our ladies, just honk your horn and tell them how much you appreciate them. Thank God for them. Amen. Amen. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to uh, have our scripture that will be read by our own Deacon Watkins. Amen. After which, we will be led to the throne of grace by our chairman, Deacon, Deacon Kenneth Turner. Blessing to be here. The Bible said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And we will rejoice to the God of our salvation. Skip the words and name the first song. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praise unto thy name, O Most High. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithful, faithfulness to thee every night. Upon the instrument of ten strain, upon this heart, upon the heart where they solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made glad through thy work our crown in thy work of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy work, and thy thoughts are very deep. A brutish man know it not, neither do a fool understand them. When the wicked spring out of the grass, and when all the works of iniquity, do flourish is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the works of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall die up like the horn of a unicorn. And I shall be anointed with fresh oil. I read the 92nd Psalm down to the 10th verse. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As we bow our heads, we're going to take a moment of silence of all the depth that we have had. A lot of people have left this world during this virus, but we're going to just remember them, their families, in prayer this morning. Gracious Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for last night's sleep rising this morning to see the brightness of a new day. We thank you because you have allowed us to get up this morning just to say thank you. We thank you for the Holy Ghost that sweetly abide in our soul right now. Lord God, last night we thank you for the angels that was encamped around us, Lord. Continue blessing our pastor and first lady at all times. Continue blessing the Smyrna saints. Thanks all all over land and country, Lord God. We thank you for blessing everyone that's in the nursing home right now. Lord God, touch this land right now. Lord God, we know this is a wake-up call, Lord God. We want you to let us see what you want to try to tell us to see, Lord. But we say thank you right now, Lord God. We thank you because you allowed us to dress ourselves. We thank you because we allowed us to feed ourselves. Oh God, we want you to go across the land and country. Bless our president, Lord God. Uh, help him to make the right decisions, Lord God. Bless every officer, Lord God. Bless the those that are in charge, Lord God. We want you to take right now. Bless that mother, that father, that sister and brother, Lord God. Lord God, we come to you this morning, but we know how. Thanking you because you allowed us, Lord God. Just to say thank you. You allowed us to say thank you. We thank you for everything that you are doing, that you're going to do. We say thank you right now. We want to thank you for the word that's going to be preached this morning. We want to thank you for every song that has been sung this morning. All in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I 
told you that wherever we are, that's where the church is. Praise the name of our God. And so if you feeling a little jumpy this morning, it's okay. Hallelujah. Because something on the inside. Hallelujah. It's going to show up on the outside. Oh, what a change. Oh, what a change. of the service over into the pastor, Bishop Thomas L. Fowler. Amen. Honk your horns for Jesus, Bishop Fowler, and our marriage in Jesus' name.
Celebrate her. Amen. Celebrate. Time to celebrate. We were also to remember all the sick and shut in. One of my cousins, one of their pastors, pulpit, pulpit ministers, Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church in Detroit, Reverend Green, made his transition. We pray for that family. We're giving God all praises. All praises. Come on, let's praise Him. Last Sunday we are here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Uh, if, you, if you get down, warm in the car, step out the car, and just wave your hand and give God a praise and get back in. 
the ransom saved with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to celebrate this last Sunday in May. We're going to celebrate and give God the praise. We celebrate because the virus is going to be gone. The, the death's going to be stopped because God's in control. Not about the drugs that folks take, but it's about the Holy Ghost that's going to cure this disease in Jesus' name. God has a cure. He has a cure. He has a cure. Whatever you're going and whatever you got, God got a cure for every known disease to man. What they're searching for, God already got the cure. The cure is in Jesus' name. He said, heal us from all our diseases. And we believe it in God going to do just that. He's still God. He's still King of Kings. He's still Lord of Lords. And folks, the old folks are dying, but the Bible said, live and not die. We can live and not die. We're going to die one day out of a physical world, but we're going to rise in a new world. But this old world is going to pass away. Give an honor to uh, my wife and all the elders, the ministers, deacons, Mr. Saints and friends. We just give God all praise and honor our musicians. We thank God. Our singers on today, he's worthy to be prayed. We're going to look at the book of Acts, Acts 4, the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 1. The book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 1. We're constantly praying for our people in leadership to make the right decisions. We praying for the, those that are in power to be led by the Holy Spirit. It's not about parties, it's about God. And He will control things if we give it to Him. We need praying folks in power. We need Holy Ghost filled people that's in power. Someone can get in touch with God. Because anything can change a nation. Is prayer. I think about Jonah and how he went, was supposed to go to Nineveh and he went to Tasha. But when the, the people in power began to pray and fast, God sent deliverance to that nation. When a nation forget God, you will suffer. Right. And when you turn back That's to God, yes. you're going to see deliverance. And I believe it. If we turn back to Him today, you're going to see a difference. Because when the schools can't pray, to pray out of school, but in Congress, in the Senate, they pray every time before a session. They have chaplains That's right, Bishop. to pray. The military has chaplains to pray. Yes, yes. Before we go into war, we, they pray. What's wrong with the That's schools right. praying? It's praying everywhere in federal government in certain places. That's right. But the schools can't pray. And when they say they was coming to America to, for religious freedoms, our freedom has been politicus, politicized away. And, and the whole system of religion in America has changed. So many in Europe, so many churches have been turned into museums and bars and churches are shutting down. God is still in power, but people want to do what they want to do and forget God. Yes. Acts 4 verse 1 says, And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captains of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus Christ, through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in bond and hold until the next day, for it was near evening time. 
how be it many of them which heard the word of God believe, which heard the word believe, and the number of men was about 5,000. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and shrines and Annas the high priest, Catapus the John and John Alexandrine of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem and when they had set them in the midst, they asked by what power or by what name have ye done this? Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost, saying to them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to these imparted, impotent men, by what mean he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom he crucified, him he crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does doeth this man stand before ye hold. Now these was not people of no power, no authority, but these were, was the aristocratic people, the powers that be. They were rulers and uh, of the temple and rulers of Jerusalem, the Romans, and yet and still they forgot about the God that brought them through the Red Sea. They got, forgot about the God that brought them through the plagues. Yes. They forgot about the God that did many miracles for their land and for their people. Now the priests, the priests, the office of priests, it all to began with Aaron and his son in Leviticus 8. They became the human intermediator between the Holy God and sinful humanity. They were characterized by three qualifications. They were chosen to set apart for the priestly service by God. Two. They were to be holy in character. I said holy in character. And three, they were the only ones allowed to come near to God on behalf of the people with the high priest being a chief go-between on the day of Pentecost in Leviticus 16 and number 16 and 5. The captain of the temple chief of the temple of the police force, compo composed of, of the Levites, and second rank officials to the high priest. The Romans were designated to temple policy, responsibility to the Jews. And they knew, because of the Old Testament teaching, that the Messiah would come. The priests wanted to keep their power. It wasn't about anything else, but it was about a power struggle. They didn't want to lose their authority because of these men preaching about Jesus. See, they knew the law. They knew regulation. But the power, see, people get so drunk with a power and authority, they forget who they are. And I say today, in, in, in Washington, they are drunk with power. And they forgot about people that elected them for their office. That's right. Yes. They choose to go along with a few and forget about the masses. Same thing here. They forgot what they, who they were, their position. They was called to be, they were chosen, set apart for the service of God. They forgot about the service of God. They didn't want these men to teach and preach anything opposed to what they were teaching or preaching. They wanted them to be bound. They wanted them to die because of their stand for God. To deny Jesus Christ as Lord. They didn't want to recognize him as their savior or their deliverer. It was all about power. 
And you look at anything in, in man, it's always been a struggle about, about power, about greatness. Who's the greatest athlete? Who's the greatest uh, uh, president? Who's the greatest governor? Who's the greatest singer? It's all about who's the greatest church. It's all about greatness. It's not about God anymore. It's about personal uh, a thing, character, that you want to be great. But God is great, and he's worthy to be praised. I thank God for a great God. So, saints of God, don't you get tied up in this world system about being big or great. You stay where God can use you, because every time man get up, he forget about God. Luke gives an extensive account here of the arrest and trial of John and Peter, as he does later with Paul, to demonstrate that Christianity is not an illegitimate set, even though continue attacks. We are legitimate. God made us legitimate. We're not doing it because of our power, but we're doing it because he saved us with his power. And these men could do nothing apart from the Holy Ghost. Peter even lied and said he didn't know Christ. He denied he ever knew him. Hallelujah, when he was tested and tried. But the Bible said that before the cock was crowed thr thrice, three times he was denied, which he did. And he repented because of, he knew that he had forsaken his Lord and his Savior. We, see, uh, we still see here in response to a sermon Peter had preached, the priests and the captains who guarded the temple and the Sadducee, the aristocrats, did not believe in the resurrection that had come. Because Peter and John had preached that Jesus woke again. And they didn't want to accept the fact that there's somebody greater than our high priest. Jesus, he was king, he was priest, and high priest, and he was God. He was everything. And you have to realize, when you got Jesus, you got it all. That's right. Hallelujah. Preaching through Jesus Christ, the resurrection, the part of apostles' message, was most objective to the Jewish leaders. It was about power. We can't have nobody. He didn't go to a school of higher learning. He's not a part of us. You know how people are. If you're not a part of my organization, you, 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 don't, you don't have the power. If you don't go to my school of theology, you don't have the power. Because I went to Yale or Harvard. I went to Wake Forest. That don't mean nothing of God. Because God took to my learned, educated men filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And 3,000 were saved on one message. And they had been preaching for a, a thousand years and nobody saw God. They, they went through a dark period. And the priesthood was just uh, been down away with it because they had forgotten about God. And they forgot about their duties to God. When you forget about God, say, you're in trouble with God. And so many in America have forgotten about God. We don't go to church on Sunday. They're hard about we we're, we're not having church in the building, and the same ones are complaining, don't even go to church. It's a political ploy to try to keep folks messed up and confused. The ones hollering out, open the churches up. They don't go nowhere near church. On Sunday, they're, at the, they're playing golf. On Sunday, they're boating. They're at the beach. They're not concerned about the church. They want to create confusion in the church. But we refuse to let the devil take over the church because he has no power and authority. This, this, is a, this is a setup from the devil trying to divide and conquer the church. His job is within, not without. It's an it's a attack in the You got pastors fighting against uh, the, 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 the virus. They, you got pastors fighting. Don't you know it's a health thing? My, my, your, it's not about you because you wear a mask. It's about me receiving your germs. This germ is transmitted. It's in the air. How do you think it came from China? They say China, but it ended up in, in, in the United States and all around the world. That's a bad virus. Didn't use no airplane? Didn't use no ship? Hallelujah. Just jumped on the wind. Jumped on it and come on across. Say, God said, I'm going to send you someplace. And the, and the Spirit said, and the, and the virus said, where you going to send me, Lord? He said, I'm sending you to get folks straight. I'm sending you to get folks back on their knees. And I come to tell you this virus that put people on their knees. People are staying in the house.
They're afraid to come out. They're afraid to eat at a restaurant. Why? Because the virus is a bad boy. That virus sent straight from the pits of hell. And the Bible said God loosed it for a little season. And people are dying because of the virus. And they saying use this, use that. Even use Clorox. And use this and that and I can tell you, you, use what you want. If the virus going to get you, if your name's on the virus, it's going to get you. Somebody give God a praise. I'm praying. I'm anointing with God. I'm anointing my head. I'm anointing my feet. If I go out, I go out in the name of Jesus. If I die, I die because I'm going to rise again. I'm going to rise in that latter day. There is going to be a resurrection of the dead. God's going to call us home. You can die right now, but you'll be in the presence of God. Don't you be afraid. You be cautious. You look out for yourself. Folks scared to go into the building. I go in the building, come out. Ain't no devil in hell in here. Ain't no demon in there. Ain't no virus in there. I go in and party in there. If I die, I die in the name of the Lord. Stop being afraid. You are the afraid of God. Cause give the body and the soul. That's what you got to fear. You got to fear him. See people walk around, saints walk around scared. All this journey in this world for thousands of years and you scared because you have no faith. I trust God. I'm not ignorant of the fact that I still wear a mask. I'm not ignorant of the fact that I'm not trusting that mask. I'm not trusting medication. If I die today, I'm in the hands of a great God. And I'm going to rise one day because he said he's the resurrection of life. So saints, stop being so afraid of the devil. That's where he's come from. The spirit of destruction that is death. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what he's doing. A lot of pastors are dying. It's not because of the virus. Because God is calling them home. Ain't nobody going to leave here unless God calls you. He has the power. He has the power. People running by and Almost a million strips with drugs trying to stay here. You can take drugs around your nose, you're going to die and leave here. Because your time is up, you're going home. When your number is up, you're going out of here, saints. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Now, you, these men, they went against the church. They, they was going, so be religious people, religious, going against the word of God. Annas, Caiaphas, and John 18, 3, even though Annas, 80s, 6 through 15, had been replaced by Jonathan, who was one of Annas' sons, to replace Caiaphas as high priest in AD 36. Annas was a patriarch, ex high priest. His son in law, uh, Caiaphas, held the position and the office in Luke 3 2. Now, this shows that the higher up in the temple were all gathered together to see if they could trap Peter and John. See, this thing is about trapping the saints and having you afraid to go in the house of worship. Only we don't go in the house of worship because we, we follow the protocol. It's not because of anything else. Because they said, why would I want to respect somebody else? So we have to be cautious. It's not fear, it's, it's being smart to the fact, I don't want to hurt my brother. I don't want my brother to get sick because I made him sick. A friend of mine was telling me that ran, ran a funeral home. She said they had nine people who was infected by one individual. They went to the beach at, at weekend, come to church and infected nine people and five died. He's still alive. And the first thing he said, well, I come to church to get healed. No, you are a demon straight from hell. Though you were sick, then quarantine yourself. If you know you're sick, you know you got a fever, why come to the house of God to make folks sick? That is a demon. So the devil got many tricks up his sleeve, saints. That's right. Many tricks up his sleeve. Acts 4 and 7 says, when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power? Or by what name have you done this? Now, they knew this was a supernatural power. They knew the question already. They had heard about Jesus' healing. 
They heard about him touching blinded eyes. They heard about him raising the dead. They knew who he was, but they wanted them to confess who he was so they could trap them. They knew it was the power of the Holy Ghost. They knew Jesus was in, in the midst of this. They knew he'd been crucified, but he spoke about he would come again. So all the tricks and things they had done to get rid of him, they couldn't get rid of him because he was much alive. He was more alive then than he was physically on earth because now he in the spirit realm to protect all of us. So they knew exactly what they were saying. This is a, uh, uh, this was uh, Peter and John. The question itself, let you know that these in power here did not have respect for the name of Jesus Christ Instead of being pleased that the man, the crippled man was healed, but they were to criticize what was done. They were concerned about the miracles. They were mad because they were afraid that people would get this message and would turn from the temple into these men. It still didn't stop these brothers. Even when these brothers cruci was, was crucified upside down, put in oil and burnt to death, put in lion's den, and, 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 and Nero used them for light poles. They did everything to them, yet still they couldn't stop the Word of God. And this virus is not going to stop the Word of God. Nothing going to stop the Word of God because Jesus is in power. Only time you stop when you're dead, saints. Don't give up the fight. Don't give up. So many people are afraid today. Afraid. The Lord is testing your faith. I wear a mask. I go where I need to go, do what I need to do because I'm not trusting in the mass. I'm not trusting in medicine. I'm trusting in God. Because a lot of people are going into the hospital and never return. They might well die at home. You might well die, if you're going to die at the hospital with nobody around you, at least if you die at home, you got family. At least you got a chance for somebody to pray you through. Ain't nobody praying you through when you're in that hospital and you're there by yourself and you're on a ventilator. You need somebody to pray over you. I don't know if the chaplains are going in and praying. I don't know. But most ones I've heard of that I knew went in and never come out. That I know. Never got back. And most of them was men, not women. Husband and wife are going in, the woman coming out. And they had the same thing. Some up with that. That's because the devil is trying to take the power away, taking me and out of here. He's up to something, saints. If you don't know God today, you better pray. If you don't have a, a relationship with him, I'm not with the church. I'm not talking about church affiliation. I'm talking about with him. Do you know him? I'm not talking with your mouth, but with your spirit. He said, if you have not the Holy Ghost, you're none of his. Do you have it today? Are you filled? If you don't have the Holy Ghost, don't die. Run from death. Because when that great day, when the Lord come back to his church, you have the first resurrection of the saved. The saved don't get out of here. And the second one is the one that's not saved. Those ones don't miss heaven because they never accepted Christ. And it's going to be church folks in this. They said, we Lord, then we do many miracles in your name. Many, many things healing and we prophesy your name but Jesus depart from me I never knew you because your heart was of iniquity you was doing it for the fish in the load preachers stop preaching for money stop selling your soul for a dollar bill don't sell your soul for mammon The Bible says, I love a man, it's a wax cold. So if you're in it for the money, you're going to pay a dear price. 
If you preach it for folks, for what you can get, you're going to get it in the end. I'd rather die broke and have salvation and have a billion dollars and go into hell. Where is your heart? Get your mind off of things of this world. God knows what you need. God is not ignorant. He knows you got to have a house to live in. He knows you got to have money to feed your family. He knows that. But put him first in your life. People are selling out for the things of this world. They got a drug they use in Silicon Valley. They talked about a smart drug. And the question was asked, they did a document, document, documentary on it. And the guy said, I'd rather take a chance at dying rich with this drug than dying poor. That's how low man have gotten. They don't believe it's a hell. But the Bible says it's a place that the fire is not quenched, tormented day and night. Gashing of teeth, gashing of teeth, pain and suffering. I'll never forget my uncle told me he died and went to that place. And he said when he got there, he saw all kind of things. And the spirit, the devil told him, so I'm not ready for you yet, go back. A few, few years later, he died. Hope, hopefully he got himself together. He had a second chance. But he saw hell. That's what his words were. He's of the horrible place. You know, a lot of folks talk about they went to heaven. But not many said they went to hell. That's true. And returned. But he told the place he went to. The rich man didn't get the opportunity to talk to his family because he was dead. But he was in hell. So we have a chance today, saints. Who are you going to choose today? Are you going to stand with Jesus? Are you going to stand for him? Are you going to stand up for him? Are you going to love him? I'm not trying to love your church. I'm not trying to love your pastor. I'm trying to loving the Lord. Hallelujah. We must be filled with the Holy Ghost saints. We got to be filled with His Spirit. I'm not talking about running, jumping, and shouting, having a good time. Music can make you do that. Xavier can play you and make you shout. But He can't play and make you live right. Amen? Singers can sing you happy. Sing you crazy, but they can't sing enough for you to get salvation. Wherever you are right now, if you can't stand out, if you would, if you can make it out of your car, just a stand. If you can stand it this last Sunday, God has kept you all the folks have died around the world in the millions. But God has kept you safe. Hallelujah. If you're not afraid, stand on our side of the car and give God a praise. If you're not afraid, stand up and give God your best praise. If you're not afraid, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you got some backbone, hallelujah. If you love the Lord, give Him your best praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, come on. This is your hour. I'm not bowing. I'm not stooping down. I'm going to give God my faith. He kept me when I couldn't keep myself. When I lost my mind. When I lost my courage. Hallelujah. He was the one. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a faith. On this last Sunday. Hallelujah. I don't know what you may not make me do. But I'm going to give God a praise right this day. This moment, this hour, ah, hallelujah, hallelujah, come on, praise the God.
receive the Holy Ghost, you better get it, and you better get it now, because this is a test of your faith. This virus is testing people's faith. Don't you bow down to the devil. God is my healer. God is my deliverer. God is my way maker. Man got so much power, he can put you on a table, take an anesthesiologist and put you to sleep. And you don't even know you're in the world. That's what man does. Put you on a bed, put you to sleep, and when you wake up, you don't even know you went to sleep. That's how much power man has. But one thing man can't do, he can't bring you back to life. Because if you give you too much or, too, or not enough, you'll feel it. If you give you too much, you'll die. So, but God has all power. Don't you ever forget that. He has what? All power. The, the people say the present power is unlimited. It's only good for eight years. Only for eight years. God's power is it from eternity to eternity. God has all power. You get back in your car. I see y'all out there sweat. Y'all are used to heat. <laughs> Hash up the windows. Open the door. I'm about finished. But say, don't you give up on faith. Anybody here that don't have the Holy Ghost, raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. If you don't have it today, you can receive it. Come on, brother. Come on up, preachers. Go down and pray for him. How are you going up? This is business here. This is soul business. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. against the power of the Holy Ghost. 
these men treat Jesus as they say, we're going to obey God to obey man. We're not going to stop preaching Jesus. We're not going to stop preaching about the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is real. If you don't have it, you better get it. You better get it. You don't have it anywhere else. You don't have another soul. You have another soul if you don't have it. You can get it today. You can get it right now. You can, you can get it. You can get it now. Yes, Lord. I need some prayer warriors. I need folks who will, will pray. We're going to pray in this building. We're going to pray over this building. Amen. People worry about we're going to spray this, spray that. We're going to spray it with the Holy Ghost. Somebody give God a praise. They said, well, this, this preacher crazy. No, preacher got sense. The Holy Ghost is the only thing can stop anything. Hallelujah. See, you can't, you, you don't know that if you don't, you're not saved. You don't know that about the Holy Ghost until you get saved. The Holy Ghost is real. We're going to use precaution, but prayer is our weapon. We're going to use dis disinfectant, but we're not counting on that. We're going to use everything we need to clean, but prayer will cleanse everything. Amen, somebody. We're going to put some prayer on it. We're going to put some Holy Ghost prayer on us. Somebody give God a prayer. We're going to put some Holy Ghost power in this building. We're going to bring back the Holy Ghost. The glory. God gave us time to get out so we can go in. Hallelujah. We're going in. The Holy Ghost is there. The power is there. Get out so I can do my thing. We be burned out here so we can go in. We can defeat every demon, every sickness, every disease that would come in. Yes! 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 Woo! Amen, too. People didn't get it. Oh, 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 man. People didn't get it. Why do you think God allows us to get out here? He going to do a cleansing in there. He want to get the house together. He want to get the temple clean. He's cleaning the temple of all those demons and all those spirits been through that building. And this has been the only time this building has been empty in 20 some years. He's just saying to us, I'm cleaning the house. Now you clean your house, which is your soul. 
And I want everybody this week, pick you one day of fasting. One day, this week, one day of fasting. I talked to a friend of mine, they did, they did a 30 day fast. From sun up to sundown, that's past 66. Sun up, sundown, they went through a fast. And he wasn't a Christian. He was not a Christian. They fasted 30 every year. That's why they do a 30 day fast. You tell us about, I can't fast, I got blood pressure, I got a heart trouble. This brother is not a Christian. And they fast him and his wife 30 days every year. And you ask the saints about fast. I can't fast. I got high blood pressure. I got diabetes. I got this. I got that. You can't trust God for one day. And they trust God for 30 days. Many years, Bishop Graves would do 30 days in July. Hot. Couldn't eat. Couldn't hardly walk. <laughs> but we did it. And the church grew and grew. One day, saints, 6 to 6. 6 in the morning to 6 at night. You ain't gonna die. You gonna live. They ain't gonna kill you. Fast this week. And you to my powerful Sunday morning, when we get through that building, you're going to see heaven open. Now somebody today, I'm getting ready to leave. Stop. He's trying to get me. I want somebody this week, you've got something special that you need from God. This week, you need something special done. You're faced with a decision. You're faced with some decisions. This week, you need to make a decision. But God has already made a decision. Somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. Already done. Hallelujah. I'm talking to somebody right now. I'm talking to somebody right now. You need to make a decision this week. But your favor is in God. You don't have to worry. In some cases, the decision has already been made. You just got to walk in it and be blessed. Let us let you go. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we celebrate you right now. We celebrate you, Lord. We celebrate our healing in advance. We celebrate our deliverance in advance. So, so many going to start doubting before Sunday. But oh Lord, let them know that you got everything in your hands under your control. Everything going to be better than it was when they first began. Let us walk in holiness. Let us re be refilled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Let us lay before God and be refilled, rededicated, Get our hearts right to serve you more and more and more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.